In this video, we're going to take a look at how to determine the polarity of bonds. We will use electronegativity values to determine if a bond is ionic, is polar uh, covalent, or nonpolar covalent. So as per your usual lessons, you have a presentation or slide style uh, lesson along with a handout. And we'll go through the handout and do some sample problems together. Um, you can always go back and see more visuals in the, um, in the presentation style. So uh, we're going to start off with uh, filling in some blanks. And um, you can try filling them along with me. What I usually encourage students to do is to read through the presentation first, um, take a look at uh, key terms, and then try to come back to this and try to fill in the blanks as, uh, as I go through them as well. Uh, so we have electronegativity. What is that? Well, that's the ability of an atom to attract bonding electrons. So if an atom is forming a compound or a molecule of some sort, um, it uh, will attract electrons in the bond that it's forming um, with another um, element. Um, and so the ability to attract those electrons is determined is called electronegativity. The, if you have a high electronegativity, uh, it means that you're good at pulling electrons towards uh, yourself as an element or as an atom. If you have a low electronegativity, well, it means you're not as good as pulling electrons towards yourself. And so we saw the trends in the periodic table um, trends lesson um, where electronegativity increases as you go towards the top and towards the right with fluorine being the most electronegative, for example. So using the electronegativity values, we're able to predict what type of bond will form. We can predict if you'll have a nonpolar covalent bond, a polar covalent bond, or an ionic bond. And these electronegativity values can be found on your periodic table. So just like we've seen in previous lessons, if you go to your uh, periodic table over here, there's a little number at the bottom right, for example, the 1.5 or the 1.0 or the 2.1 in hydrogen, those are electronegativity values for the different elements. And we're going to use those to determine um, our uh, types of bonds. Before we actually go and do some practice with that, let's go and take a look at what the types of bonds are and what they mean. So first of all, um, one type of bond you can have is something called nonpolar covalent. The covalent part really means that there's a share happening. Um, and the nonpolar part, what that means is that the share between the atoms is equal. So bonding electrons are shared equally between the two atoms and no partial charges develop on the atoms. We'll understand partial charges in more detail later on, um, but right now I want you to get, here's an example of a non-polar covalent um, molecule. It's two chlorine atoms uh, connected to each other, so something like this here, and they're sharing electrons. Since both chlorines have the same electronegativity values, the way they share these electrons will be equal. Um, the electrons won't spend more time around the chlorine here and won't spend more time around the chlorine here. Um, they'll spend roughly around the same, they'll be spread out evenly um, throughout these two atoms because they have very similar electronegativity values. In this case, they are um, the exact same electronegativity values. You can also have what's called a polar covalent bond, where there's still a share, that's what the co covalent part means, but the polar part means that um, the bonding electrons are shared unequally. So one of the electrons, or one of the atoms, will hold on to the electrons a little bit more tightly than the other atom. Um, and so what we have here is um, partial charges that develop. So let's go and take a look at a picture here. Here we have HCl. If you look on your periodic table, HCl is an electronegativity of 3.0 and hydrogen is an electronegativity of 2.1. Cl is more electronegative than hydrogen. So Cl will hold the electrons a little bit closer to itself most of the time um, in this bond. They're still sharing. Cl didn't rip the electrons away completely, but because Cl is more electronegative, the electrons spend more time in the region of Cl, um, as you can see over here. Uh, and so because of that, Cl gets what's called a partial negative charge. So this is the uh, lowercase delta minus there. That means partial negative charge. Um, it's not a full because it wasn't a full electron transfer like you would see in an ionic compound. Um, now, if chlorine has a partial negative charge, well, the atom that um, where the electrons are not hanging around as much, um, in this case hydrogen, it gets a partial positive charge. That lowercase delta plus means partial positive charge. So it's still a share, it's just an unequal share where the electrons are spending more time around the more electronegative atom compared to the less electronegative atom. 
Um, and so that's that's what we mean by partial charges developing. And usually to represent that, and we'll see this in more detail later on, we make an arrow like this. The arrowhead points towards the more electronegative atom, and the arrow tail um, is essentially where the less electronegative atom is, so where the partial positive charge is. And this is the um, the arrowhead is where the partial negative charge is. And so this is a term we'll, which we'll see later on. Um, and then lastly, the uh, last type of bond that you'll see using these electronegativity values is the ionic bond, which is a complete transfer of electrons um, due to an extreme unequal share of electrons. And so we have full charges that develop. So you can think of ionic um, being so polar, being so unequal that an electron is just ripped off of one of them. So for example, in this case over here, the uh, Cl is so much more electronegative than the uh, sodium that the electron from sodium is ripped off completely. Um, and so we develop full charges instead of partial charges. So this is a full negative one charge here, and this is a full positive one charge uh, over here. And so to figure out what type of bond you're dealing with, nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic, um, you use your delta E n or your uh, electronegativity difference and so we're going to figure out how to do that and do some sample problems together uh, so first let's go over a couple rules so our electronegativity difference is simply the electronegativity of one of the elements minus the electronegativity of the other it's always basically the biggest one minus the smallest one because the uh, delta en can never be a negative number so how do you do this well you simply look up the electronegativity values for both atoms in your periodic table and then you um, subtract. Um, and then you'll take a look at your result and you figure out, well, what, what you have. So if you have a uh, less than 1.5, um, you're dealing with a non-polar compound or non-polar covalent bond. Um, I shouldn't say compound, I should say bond. So if you have less than 0 0.5, you have a non-polar covalent bond where the share is roughly equal. If you have 0 0.5 to about 1.7, less than 1.7, I should say, you have a polar bond where the share is not as equal and you have partial charges that develop. If you have anything equal to 1.7 or more, then um, you have ionic, where you have a full um, charge being produced. Uh, and that's where you have the transfer. So using the electronegativity difference um, values, you can determine if you have an ionic bond, a polar covalent bond, or a non-polar covalent bond. And so, so far in the presentation, we've seen definitions of electronegativity, what the different types of bonds are, and that you can um, determine the type of bond using um, the difference in electronegativity. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some examples to figure out um, the type of bonds that we have in uh, the examples that you can see here. So again, um, this table summarizes everything we've just mentioned, that uh, when we have covalent, it's a share. If it's nonpolar, it's equal. If it's polar, it's unequal. If it's uh, ionic, it's a complete transfer. Um, so it's very, very unequal. Uh, for nonpolar, there's no partial charges that develop. For polar, there are partial charges that develop. And for ionic, well, there's full positive or negative and or, and or negative uh, partial charge, uh, full charges that develop. Um, to for your electronegative differences, if it's less than 0 0.5, then you have uh, nonpolar. If you have 0 0.5 to 1.7, I should say less than 1.7, um, then you have um, polar covalent, and if you have 1.7 or more, then you have ionic. Um, one more thing I want to mention, if the electronegativity difference is exactly zero, if delta En is equal to zero, then that's called pure covalent. Um, and this basically means um, it's an equal share it's, it's the most equal you can get because there's no difference between the electronegativity values. Um, so for example, you have uh, Cl2, H2. It's typically diatomic molecules because they're, they're made up of the same element. So their electronegativity is the same. 
So for example, for hydrogen, it's 2.1 minus 2.1, and that's zero. Uh, Cl2, oh, I already said that. Um, I2, Br2, N2, O2, all those Hofbrinkle elements are pure covalent um, molecules. They have pure covalent bonds in them. So um, right now, I just want to emphasize that we're looking really at the type of bonds. Um, we're not necessarily looking at a molecule in its entirety, but we're looking at the type of bonds just if I were to analyze one bond at a time. So here we want to find what type of bond we have when we have Si and P, silicon and phosphorus. So I'm going to do my delta En is equal to my uh, difference in electronegativity values between Si and P. So let's go to our periodic table. We'll find uh, Si 1.8 and P is 2.1. So 2.1 minus 1.8. 2.1 minus 1.8. I just want to make sure I said that right because I don't know if I read it properly. So right, 2.1 minus um, 1.8. And so we should get 0.3. And so 0 0.3 is less than 0 0.5. That means that this is nonpolar covalent. This is a nonpolar covalent bond. Let's go to look up, take a look at the bond between C and F. So C is 2.5, F is 4.0. So we're going to do 4.0 minus 2.5. 4.0 minus 2.5. And again, always do the bigger one minus the smaller one because you don't want a negative number. Um, and so that's going to be 1.5. And so we have 1.5 is less than 1.7. So uh, that's going to be a polar covalent. And what I should have said here is that it's less than 1.7, but more than 0.5. So it's a polar covalent. Uh, and now we'll try NaCl. We have delta En. For Cl, the electronegativity value is 3.0. For Na, it's 0 0.9. And that's 2.1. 2.1 is greater than 1.7. Therefore, we have a um, ionic bond. There are some exceptions. You can have some metals form um, covalent bonds with non-metals. Um, and if you do see that, you will see that reflected in the uh, electronegativity difference that you find. So we found the nature of the bonds using the electronegativity value. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look at um, bonds within entire molecules. Here I just showed two atoms. What would they be if they were connected? Let's go take a look at a molecule. 